Can you hear me? Good morning. Awesome. Just want to make sure the sound's nice and everything there. Um, welcome, St. Margaret. Welcome to today. It's actually the feast of the St. Mary the Virgin, the Mother of God, Mother of the Church, and so really excited about that. It is so good to be here with everyone. And then um, thank you again for wearing masks and sanitizing and all that. Um, one change, just wanted to give you a heads up that we will, um, we're going back to not doing congregational singing just for right now very much just with the ebb and flow, um, that with the safety committee, that's been kind of what we are advising and just doing for right now. Thankfully though, we still have the gift of music to listen to and enjoy. And so um, thank you for wanting to give a round of applause for being here. Um, we are so grateful for you being here to give us the gift of that. And so, yeah, yeah. And then, um, and then fun little note, um, Adela at the piano, who's here for Susan today, um, she's known as Miss Kwan on campus. We have a dear relationship with her with chapel, so you kind of get a peek into the school chapel side also there, and so it's really good to have you here. And with that, um, again, so good to be here with all of you and being back from break. I know we have two new members of Baptized Community. I know you guys got baptized while I was gone, so that's awesome, and so... Very exciting stuff. And with that, we may begin our offertory. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And together let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taken to yourself the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of your incarnate Son. Grant that we who have been redeemed by his blood may share with her the glory of your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of the Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who are under the law, 
so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will glory in the Lord. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. I sought the Lord. And he answered me. Look upon him and be radiant. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has looked with favour on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do take a seat. So whenever I enter a new church for the first time, one of the things I like to pay attention to is the saints, the figures, the characters that you can find in the building around you. In some churches, this is a rather easy thing. I don't know if any of you have ever been into an Orthodox church um, where everywhere you look, there are these icons, these figures um, of saints on all the walls and even on the ceilings. Um, In churches like St. Margaret's, it's a little bit harder, but you can find people. I'm sure you can see St. Margaret and there's the Blessed Virgin Mary over there and a few other figures here in there, if we pay close attention. And they're little reminders of that communion of faith that we belong to, which includes not only the church who are here in this room, and not only the church who are alive today around the world, but also the church who've been alive throughout time ever since the time when Jesus Christ was alive and walking the earth. Now in the church where I grew up, uh, there were saints in the stained glass windows, Mm. And there were also a couple of statues here and there. Um, And when I was a kid, after we had received communion each Sunday, um, we wouldn't go straight back to our seats. My 
mum would take my brother and me, and we would go beside the altar. Um, there was a statue of the Virgin Mary with a candle stand in front, and we would each light a candle in prayer, my brother and me, usually for our grandparents. Um, and only after that, my mum would take us back to our seats. Um, and I remember wanting to stay and linger at that candle stand because I didn't want to go back to the boredom of the dreaded chair. <laughs> I would stare up at Mary instead, and that'd be deep in prayer, of course, and not at all avoiding just going and having to sit still. Um, but I would look up at her, her blue eyes, her rosy pink cheeks, and she would be holding the baby Jesus up aloft for everyone to see. Um, and it struck me eventually when I was thinking back to that when I was a little bit older. Mary probably wouldn't have looked anything like that statue, would she? Her skin would have been much darker. It would have been ripened by the Palestinian sun. And her eyes, instead of a bright, shining blue, would probably have looked a little bit more like my own, dark brown. And I began to wonder whether she actually would have worn that veil so tightly against her head that you couldn't even see a strand of hair underneath. So Mary, as I was growing up, became a little bit of a complicated person for me. She was this idealized mother, but also she was perfect in her pure virginity. There was a complication there, definitely. And she was associated, as she is sometimes in our Bible readings, with that crowned figure in the book of Revelation, that crowned uh, uh, woman in heaven. Um, but also, she's described as this kind of quiet and submissive handmaid, isn't she? I remember I went to a shrine as a teenager um, called uh, Walsingham in England, um, and at this Marian shrine they had um, a figure of Mary that looked almost like a doll, and uh, they would dress her up um, in these heavy, lacy veils that would hang over her face so that you could barely even see her underneath. And really, this is what the world does to, to women, both deifying and demeaning us, both adoring us and ignoring us. And just like that, it's what the church has done to Mary, does continue to some extent to do to Mary. And some of you listening today might come from traditions uh, that have uh, experienced, where you've experienced that for yourselves. Some of you might come from traditions that have reacted to all that as, well, it's nonsense, isn't it? It's idolatry to treat Mary in that way. And so we ignore Mary pretty much altogether because we don't want to go too far in that direction. And I didn't pay attention to Mary for years, really, um, because of that. I didn't let Mary speak for herself which, in retrospect, was a bit of a shame. Because when Mary does speak for herself, it becomes very clear that she isn't that submissive caricature of femininity that I was presented with in my youth. When Mary opens her lips, she speaks from a heart that is overflowing with faith and hope and love, those key virtues of the Christian life. And when she accepted God's plan to bring Jesus to birth in her, she became the first Christian. In our gospel reading today, we heard her be the first person to preach the good news of Jesus Christ into a confused and uncertain world that was plagued by inequality and corrupt power and sickness. That world sounds quite familiar to us, doesn't it? the problems we face today definitely are not new. And when we let Mary be herself, when we let her speak in her own words, we meet a saint whose powerful words and examples speak into our own anxious hearts today. A saint who was given by Jesus not only to be his mother, but the mother of, in a sense, the whole church, teaching us, encouraging us, praying for us just like we do for one another. In the face of this world that she lived in that was torn apart by political instability and poverty and disease, Mary wasn't submissive. 
with all of the misogynistic connotations that that word sometimes brings. Mary wasn't submissive, but she did abandon herself to God, the God who she knew to be shaking up the world for the good of the poor and the outcast and the sinner, because she was all of those things herself. God was shining a light into the darkest of places and turning everything on its head. In the chaos of her world, she surrendered herself to God. She said yes to God, whatever suffering that would entail. She said, my soul magnifies the Lord. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. So Mary goes on to tell her cousin Elizabeth about exactly how God is going to save the world, how not only in the future, but God is in the process now of saving the world, unseating the people who have power and lifting up the lowly instead. That's one, that sounds quite revolutionary, doesn't it? Unseating the powerful, lifting up the lowly. That's the work that God is doing, feeding the hungry and sending the rich away empty, dismissing the rich. That can make us feel a little bit uncomfortable, I think. God scatters the proud in the imaginations of their hearts. These are strong words of hope from somebody who would have been considered or who would have experienced life as someone who was lowly and poor. Mary knew for herself that God is always, always on the side of the vulnerable and the overlooked. She knew it as that young woman who fit into all those categories, who experienced it for herself. She came alongside people and spoke those words of hope to them. And she knew from the angel's announcement that this liberation from sin and all its consequences was what her son Jesus would be bringing into the world. It had all been set in motion by this announcement of the Messiah. Sometimes we can be really tempted to despair. It can be the easiest response for us to have when we're faced with a world that seems to have exactly the same problems as it had 2,000 years ago and probably 2,000 years before that as well. We're back in masks, <laughs> which I know is you know, difficult for some and, and, a, and a sign perhaps that you know, we're not moving ahead as quickly as we hoped that we were. And obviously when you read the news and you hear about the kind of things that are happening today in Afghanistan and places around the world, we can be so tempted to despair on some level. But Mary invites us instead to have hope in her son. Mary went on to walk this incredibly painful road of suffering, watching her own son be arrested and killed. She's someone who understands the difficulties in this life. But she also knows the joys of God's resurrection, both in the resurrection of Jesus, but also in her own resurrection alongside all of the saints, all of the church, into the kingdom of God. So I think about this now when I go into a church that has a candle stand in front of Mary. I light a candle in prayer and I think about how in times of uncertainty and frustration and pain, my prayers can only ever be an act of surrender to God. But I also think about how I'm not alone, how Mary and the rest of the church are joining me in prayers and reminding me to have hope, have hope in our God of resurrection, who promises never to abandon us. Amen. Sit down.
And together, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for John and Diane, our bishops, for the clergy of this church and school, and for all other bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Shepherd of your people, we thank you for your most devout servant and Saint Mary, who is faithful in the care and nurture of your flock. And we pray that following her example and the teachings of her holiest life, that we may by your grace grow into stature of the fullness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And devoutly, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. You may be seated, not be seated, you may stand. <laughs> you guys are already.
Yes, good morning. It is so good to be seeing all of you here. And um, it is towards the end of summer and everything. And so just yeah, we could ask for some extra prayers on the school side. Teachers are starting to come back this week and we're starting to do our training and then the school starts next week. So um, if we can keep our school community and family in your prayers, that would be wonderful. And um, with that, also some new and exciting things. We do have that pantry that we are developing more and more that is gonna be reaching out to new mothers and their supplies and all. And so we are starting to collect different things. I was told by John, just no diapers. We have more than 20 diapers, but if you ever have any um, formula or wipes or anything like that, um, clothing, even if it's gently used clothing, feel free to drop it off at the um, church offices. And we're gonna start doing that more and more so. And even the lower school is gonna start helping with that. But um, hopefully it will just be an incredible outreach to be able to reach those in our community, especially new moms and with newborn, being able to help take care of them in that way. Um, with that, any other announcements that we can think of? Anybody have any? All right, um, we're still gonna do the same way for communion where we'll have an option here right in front. If you feel most comfortable taking your own, you're more than welcome to do that. And we will be on the side handing out communion. Also, we will be using a glove today. Again, it's just to keep everybody safe. That's, the, that's our biggest thing. We just love everyone too much. And so sometimes we might just be making changes for what we feel comfortable with. And whatever you feel most comfortable with, that's your choice also. And so, um, and again, thank you for the gift of music today since we can't sing, um, but let us enjoy some Ave Maria right now as we prepare the table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all your saints who have been cho the chosen vessels of your grace and the lights of the world in their generations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of a new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. of God.
take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace and love which passes all understanding abide in all your hearts and minds in the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you on this day, this beautiful, glorious day, and forevermore. Amen. And so um, let's, how about we all stand and we'll do the dismissal now and then enjoy some music afterwards. So please stand. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.